how many of you use your GPS? Say I. I. How many of you insert the address in the GPS thinking that it's going to take you to the right direction? I. Say I. I. How many of you have missed the exit without getting off? <laughs> Say I. I. Well, it happens to me all the time. And I believe most of you have been in the same situation. And I have to admit that when it happens to me, I just start looking at the GPS and I want to strike it. <laughs> and sometimes I condemn technology and some other times I, yes, start talking to the GPS as if it can hear me and give me that rerouting sooner. And, uh, you know, I have to admit that it all depends who is riding with me, if I'm in a hurry, if I'm in a good mood, or if I'm in a bad mood, the way I react. And please, do not let me forget about the co-pilots, especially my kids. No, they don't miss a chance. Believe me, they don't. And I can hear them now as if they, if they are riding with me right now. And they go like, told you, Mom, the exit was back there. <laughs> and if you don't know how to use the GPS, do not use it. Just ask for directions. Well, one day I said, behind the wheel of my life, I took my GPS and I inserted what I thought it was going to be my forever Happy final destination. Yes, I got married. Please don't say I. <laughs> but life is not that simple, and it changes. And after my divorce, I have to do some rerouting. And, you know, that circle came out, and I start going in circles as if it was trying to give me a different destination to get where I needed to be. And while this was happening, I had to go through so many roads. Some of them were dark and dangerous. Some others had a speed limit. And in others, I had to pay a toll. That's when I learned to be humble. That's when I learned that I needed to stop and ask for directions. And I have to admit, that I was so lost, so lost, that sometimes I even thought I never was going to get to any destination. Thank God I was wrong. And during that journey, I learned so many things. One of those was how to combine my passion with my needs. And I met so many people that were willing to jump into my car, letting me behind the wheel, Riding with me and assuring that I was going to get safe and sound and on time to wherever I needed to be. And I learned so many other things that were very, very important. And one day, one good friend of mine, one of those that I met through this journey, called me and said, Pilar, can I have some of your dips? You know, he makes some chips. And he was going to enter a contest. And he said, you know, if you give me your tips, the judges can try them with my chips. And I said, of course, yes. That night, he called me and said, Pilar, forget about the chips. All they want is your tips. <laughs> you must enter that contest. The contest is organized by the City Economic Development Center with the sole purpose of helping small entrepreneurs like myself you know, to get the business to a higher level. To enter the contest, you need to attend a series of classes. You know, it's like a chart tank. So you go through this process and take these classes and they teach you things like um, how to pitch your idea to investors, how to make a business plan, which I didn't have any idea, how to borrow money from the bank, and even how to pay them back. 
that was the good part. So I entered the contest, and guess what? I won. They give me, <laughs> they give me $50,000, the support and the confidence to move to the next level. And being the businesswoman and hard worker lady that I am, I moved my whole operation from my kitchen to my garage. <laughs> huge stuff for me. It was huge. So it didn't take long before somebody in my city called me and said, Pilar, would you like to represent us in a statewide competition? One that is organized, but uh, one of the 10 most important supermarkets in the nation and the most important in Texas. I said, yes. I entered the contest, and 700 more small entrepreneurs like myself apply. If you win, they give you the opportunity to put your products statewide in their stores. And you guessed it, I won. And I was so excited, I was so happy, I was just like shaking all over. And I decided not to waste a minute and make the first business call of the day. And of course, I decided to call the people that have put me in the situation that I was now. And I told you, excited, yet in control, the phone call was something like this. Houston, Houston, we have a problem. I didn't know how to make dips for such a big audience, such a, a big supermarket. I was scared. That's when I learned the most important lesson of my journey. I learned to calculate my strengths and my weakness. I learned to surround myself with people smarter than me, people that complimented me people that elevated my strengths and multiplied them and cope with my weakness. I also learned to be super humble and admitted that I did not know everything. And you know what? I'm not supposed to. I'm not supposed to know everything. And I also learned to ask for help. Each year, thousands of entrepreneurs start new businesses. And I know, and I want to share with you, that there are so many options and a lot of help out there. But first, I want to share with you some statistics that are very important for me. 25% of those small entrepreneurs are females. 33% did not finish high school or just have a GED. And 35% of those others are between 50 and 59 years old. <laughs> and um, also, money is a very key ingredient in a business. And I learned also through this research that 33% of the businesses start only with $5,000 or less. Amazing, right? And 58 of those start with less than $25,000. And they are successful. And this is my favorite one. The favorite fact is that 82% of small entrepreneurs that are successful never, ever have a doubt that they had what it take to make a business succeed. So if you want to start a business, I want you to keep in mind that there are a lot of resources out there willing to help you. Those are your, your city's economic development centers, the chambers of commerce, the universities, incubators, and a lot of people that are willing to work for free to help you establish a business and be successful. So, I want you to 
think about this. Next time that you are lost and when you don't know what to do, just like me, you may think that today at 53, maybe I'm too old to change my route or the directions that I wanted to go. But I'm here to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that in life, like in the kitchen, there is not an, a specific route to arrive for your destination. And there is not an, a specific recipe that will give you the winning ditch. But for sure, there are some ingredients that most of all may use. Some of those ingredients, you have it within you. Some others, you have them in your pantry. And the ones that you don't have, go get them. And you know what? Use your favorite. Use your favorite ingredient to create the most amazing signature dish. For me, there are some ingredients that are very important. And those are hard work, passion, dedication, and more hard work. <laughs> but one of the ingredients that have proven to be the best of them, the one that has given me that unique touch, that exquisite flavor that leaves your palate with that amazing sensation. And by far the biggest blessing is the people surrounding me, is the people that believe in me, is the people that supported me. Consider this, next time your internal GPS pops up that circle that starts going in circles, I hope that you buckle up, let go, enjoy the ride, and find a better way to arrive to your destination. You may be surprised. Thank you.